Good morning. Welcome to the Bond Sunday Morning Services. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Good morning, everybody, again. Good morning. Good morning. Uh uh, uh uh uh. Oh, what's the topic today? I forgot already. We're going to, I want to talk about, um, there are a lot of things I want to talk about. It's been a very interesting week, our learning week, but very interesting. Uh, but I, today I want to talk about, and I'll take your questions too. I know you're just loaded with questions because everybody had a, a very interesting week, right? Uh, the life of the spirit. That's what I want to talk about. Uh, I read over the week or during the week, and I've read it before all of my life, where God said that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Anybody ever heard that? No? One person? You've heard of that before. I know, because growing up in the country, we hear about that, yeah. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. And when you think about that, that's something else. And, and this year, our theme is, uh, uh, what's our theme? I'm, I'm, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. This is, what month is this? June. June. June 2013. And the theme started out on January 2nd. You don't remember? I can barely remember what I had for dinner last week. <laughs> I understand. What's the theme, John? What's this year? What's this month? <laughs> and you don't remember the theme either? No. For this year? Uh, no, I don't remember. Amazing. Uh, let me ask the camera guy, see if he knows. Renewing the mind from within. There you go. It sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I think this year theme is more important than any other theme we ever had. To renew our minds from within. Our minds from within. Because if we don't do that, you might well hang it up and go home. And just wait to die. Um, I know for a fact that that's why a lot of people are suffering today because they have not been renewed from within. And we need to be renewed because we've been so messed up, absolutely messed up, in the way we see things, the way we think, the way we treat one another, the way we treat ourselves. It's just absolutely screwed up. And we need a renewed mind if you want to survive in the right way. You can survive by suffering the rest of your life. But let me just read this. And I brought my glasses because I wanted to read this. I know I always ask other people to read, and then I laugh when they don't know how to read well. <laughs> I'm sorry? This is Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. One through, um, I may go all the way down to 17, but definitely one through, to, through 13. Da, 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 da. Do I look important in my glasses? <laughs> uh, Romans 8, chapter 8, 1 through 13. Let me know who you, everybody has. has it. You got it? Yes. Okay. Yes. You have it, Frankie? <laughs> this is so important. Uh, the life of the Spirit. And, and you're right. We have talked about this before, but... It's definitely worth repeating. Uh, again, I want to remind you that the same spirit <coughs> that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. That's some deep stuff. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 13. The life of the spirit. Thus, condemnation will never come to those who are in Christ Jesus. 
because the law of the spirit which gives life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do because of the weakness of human nature, God did. Sending his, son, sending his own son in the same human nature as any sinner to be a sacrifice for sin and condemning sin in that human nature. This is why um, when I have people on my radio show, preachers who say that, yes, you could be born again and still sin, maybe they're not reading this. You know, this is so clear that Christ came so he can um, condemn, destroy sin in human nature, in our nature. This was so that the law requirements might be fully satisfied in us as we direct our lives, not by our natural inclination, but by the Spirit. Those who are living by their natural inclinations have their mind on the things human nature desires. <coughs> and I believe that this is why when I give out my little assignments, you know, I tell you, tell you guys to do things during the week so you can watch yourself. And before you leave the meeting, you're forgotten. And I, I believe it's because your desires are more set on human nature, the desires of human nature rather than spiritual desires. And this is another reason we have to renew the mind. Those who live in the spirit, their minds, their mind Oh, I'm sorry. Those who live in the spirit have their mind on spiritual things. And human, let me see, and human nature has nothing to look forward to but death, while the spirit looks forward to life and peace because the outlook of disordered human nature is opposed to God since it does not submit to God's law. And indeed, it cannot. And those who live by their nat natural inclination can never be pleasing to God. You, however, live not by uh, your natural inclination, but by the Spirit, since the Spirit of God has made a home in you. Indeed, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But when, you, when Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead has made a home in you, then he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal body through his spirit living in you. So then, my brothers... We have no obligation to human nature to be dominated by it. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if, but if by the spirit you put to death the habits originated in the body, you will have life. Isn't that important? That is something else. How was my reading? Very good. See there. I'm becoming white. Yes. <laughs> white on the inside, black on the outside. Um, to me, uh, last week we talked about praying without ceasing. Remember that? All that is a part of living a spiritual life rather than so attracted to uh, human nature. And 90% of people in this country are attracted to human nature. They have not been able to overcome it. And primarily because they have not, the focus has not been brought to them. The attention to dying from the human nature has not been brought to them. Or if it's been brought to their attention, it's not been brought in a way to them in a way where they would know how to overcome it. We literally don't have to live uh, and give in to our human nature. If Christ, if the spirit of, of Christ dwells in us. And I, and I like the fact it points out that if the spirit of Christ 
is not dwelling in you, then you're not the children of God. And I like that because a lot of times we fool ourselves and say that we are. We say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a son or daughter of God. But yet you're not living a spiritual life. You have to be born again of the spirit so that you can live a spiritual life. And it start to renew your mind and you see life in a totally different manner. You live it differently. You you are you surrender to God. As you've already surrendered to Satan, you surrender to God and God can start to guide you. And the fact that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, make it even more a sin that we're not living that way. We have a powerful spirit in us that can guide us, instruct us, but most people are not getting it. And they're not getting it because they're unwilling to admit that they're wrong. They're unwilling to forgive so that God can become their God instead of Satan being their God. The hardest thing in the world for people to do is to be honest with themselves so that they can forgive. And if you don't forgive, it's going to be tough. And, and Satan is winning, by the way. He is winning. Now, I see somewhat of a change coming on, a spiritual change in a lot of people that I talk to around the country and meet up with. Some people out there are seeing what's going on and they're starting to wake up within themselves. But for the most part, Right now, Satan is winning. In personal lives and public lives, he is winning. This week in Boston, I wrote this down this morning because I wanted to remember to tell you about it. This week in Boston, uh, Gay Pride Week in Boston is the subject. Raising rainbow flag over Boston City Hall, state and local officials gathered for a ceremony. Attorney General says, I will help change laws to push for a gay agenda. A week of public homosexuality with new focus on kids. A whole week in Boston while celebrating the gay pride stuff, their focus is on kids. Uh, Major Boston Hospital hold LGBT Achievement Award Ceremony uh, invites doctors and staff, and I saw the picture of it, everybody showed up. And I'm thinking, why are they celebrating this? I mean, we don't celebrate heterosexuality, do we? Do we have like a whole week of that? I haven't heard of one. Anybody ever heard of a gathering like that? <laughs> but they're celebrating everywhere now. And it's because the Christian, and they say that there are 80% of the people in this country say that they're Christians. But in all honesty, I don't see the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwelling in the Christians. Because if it was true, this would not be happening. It would not be happening. If it was true, uh, I mean, if the people understood that we have that spirit, marriages would not be breaking up in the manner that they are breaking up. Um, we have Christians who are getting bad advice from the children of Satan in their life. They're, they're going to the children of Satan and getting advice about their personal lives and business lives or whatever life. If you understood you had that spirit in you, you would not do that. Um, we have Christians who have not given over their whole themselves, their, their entire self to God. They do not let God direct their life entirely. They'll say, oh, you know, help me get some finance. You know, Lord, I'm broke. I need money, right? Or, Lord, fix my family. But they won't give their entire life to God. Not at all. Not the whole life. And if he doesn't have your entire life, he doesn't have any of it. Because you can only serve one God. You can't serve two. It's a shame that Christ, it's worse than a shame, that Christ came and gave us such power, sacrificed himself, and God gave us such such power that we have, and it just dead. It lays dormant inside of our bodies. Mad at everybody, not liking anyone, I mean, afraid to speak up, not trusting yourself. It's a mess. And I want to understand 
with those that are here and those that are out there too in, in TV land or website land, wherever you are, um, why don't you submit your entire life to God so that that spirit, that great spirit can just enhance your life? What is holding you back? I really would like to know that because it's being held back. I can, I, you'll find out today if, if the people were to be honest. Um, there are people I know for 20 years, they're still angry. I say, why don't you let go of anger? At least let that go, right? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying. Anybody who says that they are trying to let anger go need to be slapped. You need a good whooping. <laughs> but don't slap anybody. Go, don't go around slapping and say, and say well, Jesse said, you needed a slap. <laughs> and, uh, at some point, you got to let go and let God. I mean, you don't have to. You could continue to serve Satan. I know, I think I know the primary reason that most people don't let go. And so my question for you today, and the subject is the life of the spirit, that spirit that dwells in us. How many people knew before this morning that you had such a powerful spirit inside of you? The one that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. You knew that. You knew it. Let me go to Irma's hood. Oh, don't say my name. <laughs> uh, you knew before today that you had the same spirit inside of you. Yeah, I've read it. I've heard it. Oh, read that's it how you knew about it. Okay. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you live that way? No. Do you, what makes you think you believe it then if you don't live it? Good question. I'm sorry? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I've heard it. I've read it. Yeah, I, I, I think I believe it. <laughs> but I do believe it. Intellectually, you believe it. Yeah, intellectually. But spiritually, you don't believe it. Did you know without faith, you can't even please God? Without faith, he don't even like you. <laughs> <laughs> you can do all the stuff. You can give all your money. You can go feed the homeless. You can um, go to church every day. You can give away your money. But without faith, you can't even please him. Isn't that awful? I mean, I don't know if it's awful. But isn't that something? How we think so, I was thinking of so screwed up. Yes, Herman. Or anything to add? I'm sorry. I don't have anything else to oh. add. Did you let your Did you let your anger go yet? No. You have not. How many years has it been? Lost, <laughs> lost count. You lost count. <laughs> and why don't you let it go, so that this can operate through you? It's not going to oh. operate until you're anger free. Our free zone. It's not going to happen. You know, I don't think it's that I don't want to let it go. I just don't think I completely know how to let it go. Yes, you do. Oh, I'm sorry. You've heard how to let it go, right? I've heard, right. I'm about to go off like mama. Yes, you do, boy. Stop lying. <laughs> yes, lying. You've heard how to let it go, right? This guy's talking to me over here. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard how to let it go, right? Yes. And how did, what have you heard? I've heard it in church. I said, what have you heard? I've heard to uh, forgive. No, but how do you do that? Well, that's it, man. I don't completely know how to forgive. But so the, the person that told you to forgive did not tell you how to forgive? Yeah, they said, you know, let, don't hold on to your anger and forgive. You know, forgive. I can't hear you for some reason. Don't hold on to anger and forgive. But they didn't tell you how to forgive. If they did, I missed it. You missed it. Right. Is it possible? But it is possible they told you yeah, how to forgive. Possible. Yeah. But you still missed it. Right. Wow. But they have said it so many times over the last 23 years. Well, they you know, may have said how they did it, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's worked for me. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So when you hear you have this power, 
that is not operating through you, what does that do for you? I mean, it's encouraging, and uh, like I said, I do believe it. It's encouraging. It gives me hope, and that's that's the extent of it. Okay, I saw a young man yesterday. When well, I yes, maybe move yesterday, this week. I forgot which day. I knew him since he was a little baby, and uh, he's now sixteen, going on seventeen. And while growing up, he had a bright nature. You know, he was like, like so the light was on inside of him. It was just on. He was, you could have a nice conversation with him. He was somewhat honest for the most part. He was an honest guy. I saw him yesterday. I had not seen him in a year. And I saw him yesterday. I did not recognize him. I literally didn't recognize him. The light has gone out. And now you just see darkness taking over his body. In his eyes and in his physical, just total darkness. Light went out, and he's bigger than a house. He gained so much weight. Uh, needed a haircut. A big liar. Um, and I'm thinking, wow, this is something. Else. How this happened to these kids like this? How can you come into the world with this spirit working through you? Because as little kids, it is working through you. Kids forgive, they see things, they, they see it in reality, they're not in it now. And then something happens in the home that causes that light to go out. And by the time that they're 16, 17 years old, you don't recognize them. And that broke my heart to see that. I could hardly stand to see that. But it's so amazing how I now can recognize that, whereas before God caused me to wake up, I didn't really recognize that lights were going out inside of myself and others. You know, I just thought when we turned teenage, we were just acting out, wanted to be grown or something, you know, wanted to do, our th- do things our way. I had no idea, no idea that um, our parents, my parents, and our parents were putting the light out in, in us. I had no idea. And then they don't take responsibility for it at all. You know, this guy using smoking marijuana, just doing out there now. And, and, and it's just sad that that soul is now in darkness. And I don't know how long, if he'll ever overcome it. But now he got to go through all that hell unnecessarily. Because he's becoming an adult. Had he had good parents, then... Um, he would turn, become a young man. It would be easy for him to just repent and keep going and have a good life. Now he has to live in darkness. And I don't know how long that's going to happen. I can't predict that. But because of the failing of the parents, and I, and I think about it so much yesterday, I think, wow, you can tell that father, and he happens to come from a, a family that has a father and a mother there. That father, you can tell the father is absolutely not in control of his family at all. His light is out. And he have allowed his son to just go into darkness. Isn't that like sad when you think about it? And how is he allowing his son when he's in darkness too? Robert, can you go with the mic? He's standing like this. Um, how is he allowing his son to go into darkness when he's in darkness too? By not repenting. Oh. He should repent. He doesn't have to let that happen. He doesn't know though. He does know. I mean... In terms of he knows like what you're talking this, about? Yeah, this or particular father conflict. does know. Oh, okay. He does know. Mm-hmm. He's heard about another way out. Oh, okay. He knew this before his son was even born. Mm-hmm. And he, he rejected it. Mm-hmm. He literally rejected it. He get mad at the hearers. He judged others. And now his son is paying the price. So he does know. As a matter of fact, that reminded me, Ron and I was talking, she called me over the week and... Uh, Last week, I told you about a, a story of a man who, a father who lost all his children. He, he had all these kids. He provided and took care of them. And now he found out that all of them hate him. And he's just heartbroken to a point that he wanted to, to he would rather be dead than to bear the pain of losing his children. And so Rodney brought something to my attention over the week. He asked me, uh, um, I think the question came up in the Sunday service, 
well, how, how come the father didn't do something, right? Oh, I asked him, why did he do something about it? And he said that he didn't know about it or something. I forgot how it went. But what, do you remember your question to me about the father? Run there. I said, wouldn't it be, have been more of a teachable moment if, you know, we realized they're both in darkness? And you, you said, because you, it sounded like the woman, there's that old woman, she's turning her kids against her father again, and the father has no responsibility because when Deborah asked you, you know, about him, you know, just staying at work all the time, you said, well, if he had just been more aware, you know, like that's all he had to be. Well, it seems like that was just this little thing he needed to do, but the woman was just over here just doing this bad thing, and you said, well, she knows what she's doing. And to yeah. me, I'm like, well, somebody kills somebody. They know what they're doing, too, but they're still in darkness doing it. Uh, and, and you're right. They are in darkness doing it. And there are women who don't realize what they're doing. And there are those who do realize what they're doing. But because they're driven by the spirit of darkness, they cannot help themselves. They really can't help them. So I asked the man again, after I spoke to you, why didn't you stop this from happening while it was happening? And he paused and he said, that's like ask, asking a fish if it knows what water is. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, a fish doesn't know that it's in water because that's all it knows, right? And he said, well, I didn't know these things then. I, didn't, I couldn't see in the way that I see now. So I didn't do anything about it because I had no idea. I didn't know that a spiritual thing was going on like this. He had no idea. He really didn't know about it. And that's the problem in life is that men and women who are now adults don't know. They don't know this spirit world that we were talking about. They have heard about it. It sounds nice. One day when they die, they'll finally get there. And I'm just waiting on the Lord to bring me home but they don't know about it. As a result of not knowing, their families are being destroyed. Absolutely being destroyed. And you can't blame God for it because he, he, he's given it to us. He's given us a way out. And so we have to uh, at first blame our parents and realize that they set us up to become this way because there is no excuse for them either. They should have repented. They heard that you could repent. They know about repentance, and you can't blame anyone else. God gave us the ability to go to him and ask him. And whatever we ask for, we shall have it. So as adults, we can't blame anyone. We have a way out, and we all at least hear about it. Uh, and so for those men and women who have heard about this other reality of repentance and being born again, may God have mercy on your soul when your kids become adults, because you would never have peace yourself. This family of this boy would never have peace because he could always be a burden on them. And it's just a shame. It's an absolute shame to let Satan win like this when Christ came and made all things possible. People don't really most people are pretenders, I think. They are pretend that they want the truth, but they really don't want it. Because if they wanted it, their mindset would be set on these things. And I know that because I've always wanted the truth. Uh, my mind, even when I didn't know how to get it, I've always wanted to know what it is to be a son of God. I read it in the Bible. I read that we should have a better life. We should have our life of peace. So I've always wanted that. But most people don't think about this. They, they'll leave this meeting and forget it. Go right back into their rat hole. Isn't that like amazing to me? At least I'll go home and take a, a breath or something and think about what I heard today. <clears throat> Come Monday morning, they'll, they'll do the same old thing, deal with the same people, do the same thing, nothing changes. They'll go down that same road. It's just mind-blowing to me. While families are falling apart, we're losing our country, soul after soul is being lost. And why y'all looking at me like this? Do I sound like real serious right now? Yeah. I sound very serious. It's a serious thing. It really, really is serious. 
because of what's happening in the country and to families. When they can have Gay Pride Week, the politicians show up and make a promise that we're going to pass law to support sin. You know we've lost it. We're going to pass laws to say sin is fine. You know the devil is winning. Isn't that amazing? You have suggested that is something else. Yes, Rhonda. Um, for me, I, I realized that even though I saw benefits from the um, meditation, that I was more doing it because of what I thought I might, the punishment, you know, I might not <laughs> go to heaven more than want to glorify God and be the voice of God. And it seemed like he was so far away, you know, it's like so far away from me. But now I'm starting to, like you say, that voice that you know it's in you and he's right there, then that makes it accessible. It, it, it feels accessible to me now. Yes. And then it's more like you, can, you want to glorify him. And it's not like a punishment you're doing this. You know, you, you get up and you have enthusiasm for doing, for meditating because you want to be still and you want to have this communion. But before, and that seems like human nature, that you do things so that you don't get the punishment, you know. Even though there's a good thing, you, in other words, like if you'll do something because you go, you go to work point. to make, because you don't want to get kicked out of your house, not so you can make more money. <laughs> And so that seems like human nature, and that's how I was doing the meditation before. That is time. human nature. You're absolutely right. It's so interesting. You're saying so much. One thing that I, I like, I, and, I, and I'm fortunate, I'm blessed, because it's, I, I started out young, wanting it. I just wanted to know what was it like to live a life as a child of God. And at the time, I don't remember having pain, so I just wanted to go to God to get rid of my pain. I remember walking down the road wondering, what is that like, you know? because they were preaching that at the church. And so I wonder, what is it like to have that kind of life here on earth? I've always wondered that. But people do, it's human nature to, to want God so you don't have conflict. Uh, or if you're in trouble, now Lord, come and help me. And as soon as the trouble passes, you forget about it, you're going back to your own mess again, creating more trouble, more of the same. That's human nature, that is the wrong motivation. But if if your motivation can change, I think that is easy to start seeing what you're talking about. And the way the motivation is going to change, you got to see that you have the wrong motivation. Because most people think that they have the right motivation, they don't. I just wanted to live that way because he said it could be done. And I knew living with Satan wasn't fun, even though it feels like fun when you're young. I see your hand, buddy, you put it there. Um, um, even though, you know, when you're young, it looked like it's fun messing around with Satan, but it's not. And as you get older, you start to see that it's not. But you're right, the motivation is not there. This is why it's so important that we tell people that, hey, there is another way. We have that spirit in us. Because they don't know. They really just don't know. I didn't know. I, I heard about this spirit, but I didn't know it until he woke me up and allowed me to see what it meant. And it's funny, everything I thought about God was not true. This young man that I was talking to the other day, I forget what day it was, I asked him, oh, how you doing? I'm doing fine, and I'm just trying to live for the Lord, and I got this job, and I believe Jesus is going to help me. I'm like, cut it out. <laughs> I cut it out. It was making me sick. <laughs> just seeing all the stuff that... Christians say that he thought I wanted to hear. And you can, when you wake up, you can look at a person and tell they're lying. All in the name of Jesus, they're lying. Isn't that something? And, and then this person finally broke down and started crying. I said, why are you crying? Because I'm ashamed that I'm up here just lying. I look at other people, I tell they're lying, and he's, he's lying. He admitted he was lying. Just saying all the right words. All the right words. And if you didn't know better, you're like, Lord, oh, this is a God child. <laughs> a God-fearing child. All the right words. Every word you wanted to hear, he had it. And you're looking at him, you see nothing but darkness. No light. 
Isn't that terrible? So if you don't know it for sure, stop saying it. People see you lying. God has a bright nature. His nature is not dark. You don't have to say it. You just live it. They'll feel it. They'll, the energy will emanate from you anyway. So if you're but living even it, you if know. you But you got to say something if somebody's talking to you about God. You know, how is life? What's going on? You just can't stand there and meditate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but let it be the words that God gives you. Instead of learn words that you've learned about, heard about, read about. Nobody want to talk to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that kind of conversation. And God will give you words to say that is helpful, that are helpful. Enlighten you, enlighten others. You don't have to be standing there and quoting what somebody has said. Oh, I'm forgiving my mama, I'm forgiving my dad, I'm just all wonderful. Stop it. That's a setup from Satan. God does not want you to preach at people like that. And don't try to, and I told this young man, I said, look, you're only deceiving yourself. You're not deceiving me. You're not deceiving anyone but yourself. When you do that. This is a drug call. You want to answer that? Uh, you had your hand for me. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to ask a question. Do okay. people know they're deceiving themselves? Themselves? Um, you know, when they think that they have it and they don't? I'm 100% sure that if this person I was talking to knew that he was deceiving himself and trying to deceive me. He had to know it because he knows how he's living now. You know, right. he sees what's going on in his life. Right. It's just that he's trying to impress me, I guess, right. move me to make me think. I don't know why. I, I love him. I want to see him well. I want to have a good life. But he found it necessary to lie. Right. He was but ashamed. It may have been out of shame. shame. You, it, that may be what it was. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. And Maybe in some, feeling embarrassed. How about some, the, some Christians that don't know what we know <clears throat> and they think they know? Do they really think they know? When, uh, before I woke up, well, I, I knew I didn't know. I, well, I knew nothing was changing. I don't, I'm trying to remember if I knew I didn't know. I don't know if I was, I can't remember right now if I was just aware that I wasn't aware. Mm -hmm. I don't think, no, I didn't know I was asleep. Yeah. I just thought maybe I wasn't reading the Bible enough. Maybe I wasn't doing enough to make the God life work for me. I think I needed to do more. And so I didn't know that, I couldn't see that there was another way of living. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the problem is with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They don't really see. Well, I know, that, I know that they can't see that there's another way. Now, I don't know if they know that they're deceiving themselves. I just think they're blind and can't see. Yeah, because I... I don't I, think people just literally say, you know what, I know I'm deceiving myself by God. Because a lot of them are so. sure they, they, they are living God's... Uh, Life. I'm sorry? A lot of the Christians think they are living the way God wants them to and that God's living through them. Right. But I, I see it in one of my sisters that she's just coding the Bible, you know? Yes. And, but she has a lot of knowledge, but she has it by reading the Bible. Right. And her house is uh, not very calm, you know? She has a lot of problems with her son. The interesting thing about just reading the scriptures and learning them it, when you're alone mm -hmm. and when you're by yourself, you see that that's not working. Because reality sets in, you're lonely, you look at your family life, it's all messed up. And, but then you just think you need to pray some more. Mm -hmm. You just think, well, you know, uh, the Lord want me to suffer like this. Mm -hmm. Or something, you make up excuses about it, rather than just saying, you know what, this ain't working. Maybe something's wrong with me here. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on, you know? You just start making up excuses right. because of the way you've been taught. I think that's what it is. And they have all kinds of books, you know, about yeah. how to live, how to act, and all of that. And and they don't they don't have the grace to do any of that. This is why, if we are truly born again of God, we got to be that light in the earth. Because he said that we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. But 
if this new birth has not taken place, this spiritual birth hasn't taken place, then you're not the light, you're not the salt. So when you run into a sister or a brother or a friend or an enemy who think that they have it but don't, you need to be able to allow that light to shine through you and allow God to give you the right words to say if there's something that needed to be said instead of just quoting the Bible and throwing out that stuff, you know, or just saying, well, you know, I hate my mama, so probably you hate your mama. It may not be that at all, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. But if you're guided by the light, God would give you the right words to say. Right. And you cannot have any judgment of yourself or anyone else. You just see love. I was, uh, well, I won't tell that story. I'll tell that later. Something very interesting happened this week along the way, but I'll talk about that later. Let me take the lady in the back first. Um, I, I was thinking of a story when you was telling that story about having something deep to say or, you know, quoting the Bible to people. Well, my neighbor, the brother passed away, and she's there by herself. So, you know, every now and then I'll speak to her. She lived right across the street. And, you know, ask her how she's doing. But this particular day, I was like, how you doing? You know, thinking I'll get fine, you know, and she'll go on back inside. Well, this day she said, um, um, it's not, not good when you don't want to live anymore. And I was caught off guard. And I was like, man, should I quote a Bible verse? What? How can I save this lady? Should, I mean, should I get deep, you know? And I said something like, well, you know, you'll make it or you'll be okay or whatever because I didn't know what to say. That's pitiful. And I went back in the house. I said, oh, my God, this lady going to go commit suicide as soon as she get in the house. Yeah. And it's not the case. I, I can't get rid of her now. She's like, you know, she loved the kids, loved to see the kids playing. She loved Clint. She loved to see Clint. He ignores her. <laughs> he run in the house when he get home. <laughs> and But she's like, I love you guys. I love to see you. But it's a new, she has a new spirit. Yeah. She wants to live. I, know, I don't know if she got that from me, but you know, I was just thinking I should quote her a Bible verse or something <laughs> so she would live. But I and didn't have any, anything deep to give her for that. And you just, all you said was, it'll be all right. Yeah. That could have been enough. The, the, the last thing she may have wanted to hear was some Bible verse. <laughs> so she probably hate Christians anyway, right? <laughs> probably. <laughs> or the Bible verses hasn't worked for her, you know? Yeah. But that's how God operates. If... If, if you truly are guided by the Spirit and you are of Him, He would give you words to say. That's that power that we have that's in us. It's not our power, but it's given to us. He would give you things to say, but if you locked in on all this stuff that you've learned, yeah. it's no good. Because what you learn seems like it sounds better. It sounds it like it'll, it'll mean something more if you had a lot to say about uh -huh. God and whatever. After, man, that's all ego. Because you don't want to sound better. You want this person to know the God that you know. You want them to know they can live. Right. I didn't know her. I mean, I don't know her personally. Right. I didn't want her to die. I mean, that's right. I don't want you to die. That's right. That's good. I love that. Absolutely love it. You got to let go of all your knowledge. Let me take right here. Thank you. Um, Jesse. I don't suppose you ever were familiar with a uh, marine bi uh, recruitment billboard that stated, we don't take applications, only commitments. Because, in a, and I may be wrong about that, but the way I see it, that's the way, uh, way our relationship to God, uh, God is. He, he's not searching for those who pay lip, ser uh, lip service. He's right. uh, looking for those who uh, commit themselves 100% in, his heart, in their hearts. Amen, amen. He wants he want you. He wants your heart. He doesn't want all your little intellectual knowledge that you think you're smarter than he is and you're going to do the job for him. He doesn't want that. Yes, sir. I'm a little confused. You, you know, you said that the devil is, is deceiving us all the time. And then you kind of said to this kid that was talking about praise God and all that. He knew what he was doing. And maybe you can unconfuse me on this. Wasn't he deceived by the devil to tell you these kinds of things? I mean, is he, is he doing it? Is the devil? How, I don't understand how that sort of works. He was... Now, I don't have no real... I don't have real proof of this, but... I got the impression you were just trying to impress me. You're trying to just say what he think 
or he thought that I wanted to hear, you know, to try to cover up how bad things had really gotten for him. So I think it was all a scam. But he even admitted, though, that he was lying. And when I said, stop lying. Because it seems that a lot of people say things that they, I mean, it's, I guess it's gradations. I mean, they could actually think they really believe it. To, they're just saying it because they think you're going to believe it. I mean. That happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you know that we had the same spirit in us that wrote, that brought Christ from the dead dwells in us? Did you know that you had that spirit inside of you? Say it again. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you. Did you know that before today? Were you late getting here this morning? Uh, a couple minutes. Uh, did you hear me talk about that spirit? I, I did at the end. Did you know you had that in you? Uh, yes, I did. You did? Yeah. And are you living by that? Is that spirit guiding you totally? No. And why not? Um, because oh, let me ask this first. How did you hear about that? How did you find out you had that? Uh, well, I've been coming here a long time. So, oh, okay. Yeah. And is it guiding you totally? No. Why not? Um, because I've, I've lived, I live in my head, and my head tells me things, too. So I'm not living through that spirit. But you, as you said, and, and this is not a test again, folks. I really want... Things got to change. I wouldn't want to die, and then when I die, I'm going through this turner, because they said they go through a turner or something, right? <laughs> and all the light shining, and now I see I had it all along. That would make you want to go back with the light this time, right? So I don't want you to wait until you die, and going through the turner, you see the light, and now you see you had it. He wants us to have her here and now. This is the best place for it. It really is, as far as I can tell. There may be other places. But for now, this is all we have. Um, what is, why do you continue to live that way, knowing that there is another way? What prevent you from getting into that way? Well, as you've been talking, I've been thinking about that, what, what prevents me from living that way. And I think that um, what I've seen you know, just kind of looking historically back in the last several years is that my mind has me convinced that it has the answers to do certain things in my life. And I continually listen to those answers uh, to my um, own demise. And so my mind has me convinced of things. Yes. And so you know, it goes a little bit to why I was asking the question about being deceived, because when I'm, do when I'm doing things, I think I'm being smart. And uh, that smartness is really, um, that's, that's the biggest problem that I have, in, in a way. And, but over the years, you've heard that the mind thing doesn't work, and whenever you listen to it, all you do is suffer from it. You have to always try to clear up or rebuild what this mind thing had you to do. Why keep trusting that if you have heard that it doesn't work? Why keep trusting it? Well, that, that comes to the second part of, of why I think that I'm listening to my mind as opposed to the spirit. Um, because I'm, I see that I'm caught up with the world. Um, and because of that, my reactions are kind of human reactions to situations rather than being separated from things and seeing things. Um, you know, yeah. going a little deeper as you get farther away from trusting, as I've gotten farther away from sort of understanding things, you know, from the spirit standpoint, I've relied upon other people, which then leads to worse decisions. So it's, it's, it's kind of a spiral. And that's what happened. As it said here, uh, and those who live by their natural inclination can never be pleasing to God. And so as long as you listen and Hermes and whomever listen to those thoughts and carry on, you're never pleasing to God. It's impossible. Isn't that amazing to be shut off like that unnecessarily? 
I've said over and over and over and over and over again, doubt every thought. You know what has really helped me a whole, whole lot within the last couple weeks? The one thing that has helped me, ah, is mind-blowing, is to pray without ceasing. And this spirit is doing it for me. That is absolutely mind-blowing. And what I mean, when I say mind-blowing, in a good way. If you want to live spiritually, pray without ceasing. Then you can live spiritually. But you got to have some tough egos. <laughs> you need, like, I mean, just tough, hard-headed, knucklehead egos. And just keep doing the same thing over and over. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, man. It's not going to work. You'll be 90 years old. You finally made that extra buck, and now you got cancer, and then you die. And then all of your family and me and everybody else try to fight over your money. <laughs> you got to stop listening to your thoughts, man. It's never going, it's going to lead you astray. It's not pleasing to God. So he's just sitting there looking like you're being silly. I see so many hands, I'm looking at the clock. Let me take this young lady first, and then I'll come to you. How do you pray, with, uh, how do you pray without sizzing? You don't come out of the room like 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that last week, right? Yes. Was that last week we talked about it? Yes. Um, watch the Sunday service from last Sunday. And then you were not here last week, right? Yeah, make sure you watch last Sunday service. Because of time, it'll take a little time for me to explain it. Okay. All right, but make sure to watch it. It's a good question. You got, who been praying without ceasing all week this week? See how nobody's doing it? Three people. Oh, four. God saved ten, and only four came back to say thanks. <laughs> yes. What I want to say is, um, how do you stay in the moment? I, I just have such a hard time staying in the moment. It's always, yes, and we, I have heard that, <clears throat> you know, the spirit is inside, but I just can't stay still long enough to up? get there. Uh, I can speak um, a little louder. I can't stay in the moment long enough to to see this you know have the spirit act through me yeah. I'm constantly thinking and going amok and that you know uh, let go of your anger then you can do it okay so then it'll be done for you so you always say let go of your anger yeah because with as long as you have anger it's not pleasing to God right you can't have faith and have anger so you're separated from him. Right. And the worst thing we could do is not have faith in God. Right. So you got to let your anger go. <clears throat> okay, so the anger is held in by just reacting to everything or? By not relaxing and going through life without kicking and screaming. You have to go through things without uh, being mad about it. You have to, whatever life is with you, Relax in it. Don't judge yourself or it. Relax in it, and then you can get there. Oh. Don't put up a wall. Don't put up a fight. Okay. So how do I look at myself and see, oh, you're angry? Ask God to show you. He will allow you to see it. Okay. He will allow you to see it. Right. You have to ask, uh, acknowledge him in the right way in all your doings, everything. You have to have faith in him in everything that you do, every aspect of your life. When you wake up in the morning, you know what, God, God, my day, God, my footsteps. You know, allow me to see, give me more light. In everything, not just one particular thing or three things, your entire life. Okay. You got to humble yourself. You got to see, see yourself as you are, and that's it. And if you can't see it, ask him to show it to you. He will. Okay, so then when, you, when I see that, then I still go... 
Okay. Don't, you can't plan it like that. It's not a plan thing you do. Right. It's a live thing that you do. It'll unfold as you're living it. So, okay, so every time I see it, just... Do you pray? Yes. You pray every day? Not every day, no. Well, you're not praying then. Okay, so... How are you going to say yes, but not every day? That's not prayer. If God wants us to pray without ceasing, yeah. how are you going to pray one day and not pray the next day or pray the next week? He doesn't even want you to stop praying. Okay, so if I, okay. So, go ahead, so if you what? Well, so if I'm praying every day and I feel like I'm praying without ceasing, but I'm, so I'm not, obviously, because I'm having still a bad, bad reaction to everything. <laughs> yeah. So no, when you wake up, there will be no more bad reaction to things. Right. Because you're going to see life in the way it is. You know, you're going to see by this, the spirit of God, the light of God. And so you're not going to be judging things as bad things, good things, right things, wrong things. You're just going to live, and he's going to guide you. He really will guide you. He, it's, I wish, I wish you knew. Yeah, I wish, well, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to be on the path, so, okay. Just know that all that you know is nothing. It's nothing. You know nothing. So don't hold on to anything. Okay. You got to, when, when God said, seek first the kingdom of God in his right way, he absolutely meant that. Nothing else worked but that. You can't seek him second. You can't pray one day, and the next day you're not going to pray. Oh, I'll pray next week. Oh, I'll go to work, and then when I get back home tonight, I'll pray. Oh, I'll pray while driving. Oh, all that kind of stuff. Even though you're going to grow into ceasing, I mean, praying without ceasing, and you will be praying while driving, but it's nothing like what you think you should be doing while driving. The prayer is not like that. All right? So you got to repent. You got to let your anger go so you can enter into this spiritual world that I'm talking about. All right? I saw another hand. Did I see your hand? I have two minutes. I have to correct myself because I've heard the verse where it says that we have the same spirit as Christ in us. Yes. But I've never heard it said quite the way you said it, which is that the same spirit that rose Christ is in us. And that's a little, seems to have a different connotation. It seems to be a little deeper than what I've read. I've never heard it put that way. Oh, okay. And, but if you don't let go of your anger and wake up, it's not, it's not going to mean it's just some, some more fine sounding words. Oh, that really sound good. And all of a sudden, you like Satan say, you know you want it, right? I really want that. <laughs> you got to grow. You got to grow spiritually. But you got to put God, you don't have to, but I recommend you put him first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right way. And all these things that I've talked about today and we've been talking about for years will be added unto you. R real fast right here uh, for me, Rob. I forgot. I saw your hand. Thank you. You know, um, I always get back into believing the instructions of my mind because your mind prepares you for the moment, for the moments that are to come. It can't see stuff in the, it, uh, spontaneously, but if it thinks, in other words, it's always giving me answers, right? right. My mind is always giving me answers that, that are always turned out to be wrong or with the wrong spirit. And, you, and yet you keep listening to it. Yeah, because the alternative is to be mindless. And <laughs> I don't have the faith that the word will come to me, or the words will come to me, if I don't already have it in my head to speak. And I think that's the whole crux of the faith thing. Where did you get this notion that the alternative is to be mindless? Well, because when I let those thoughts and, and, and those answers, you know, what I should say or what I should do, go by, then there's not really an alternative answer. There's just, there's just quiet. Right. But in those quiet moments is where you discover God. Yeah, I have not realized that, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, that's what I realize is, is my fault. It's, it's kind of scary to be mindless. Let me just say in closing... Of ourselves, we can do nothing. Of ourselves, we know nothing. Uh, 
we must be born again of the Spirit of God. And the born again experience is nothing what you think that it is. It's unfortunate that I have to use that kind of word because it gives and it implies something that I have a mind telling us that's not what it is. I'm sorry I have to use that word. But you must be born again of God. But it's not what born again you've been told. All right? Thank you. <laughs> For more information, to purchase a copy of this program, or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND. You're already home.